Hello and welcome back to another video in our series where we're moving through the process of installing SQL Server. And we've gone through the SQL Server Installation Center and gotten our primary instance, right? The database engine, we had integration services, analysis services. We also added a second instance of analysis services so we could have both flavors of multidimensional and tabular. Then we went through and separately downloaded the installer for reporting services and installed that. And we now have a reporting services server, which we configured. And lastly, we went through the process of installing SSDT, SQL Server Data Tools. And with that installation, we got a shell version of Visual Studio. And this is what's gonna allow us to create the necessary projects for those respective technologies. So SSIS, creating packages. SSRS, creating reports. SSAS, creating cubes. Perfect. Last pieces we're gonna do here, so these last two very tightly, tightly connected, is we're gonna install SQL Server Management Studio, as you can see here, referred to as SSMS. We're gonna install that. This is gonna be basically an API interface. This lets us connect to our database instance, and then we can manipulate. We can see what databases exist there. We can run queries. Anyone who's worked with Transact SQL or T-SQL will be familiar with this, but just in case, giving you the rundown. This is gonna give us the interface to very easily allow us to restore databases or potentially attach them. So for our classes, quite often, we use some very commonly publicly available data sets. So you need to have those as part of basically installed in your database instance. So we're gonna use, we're gonna install SSMS first. Then in the next module, we'll see how we can attach, or in our case, we're gonna specifically refer to restore a database on there so that it can be accessible via all the different technologies. So when you're making an SSIS project, let's connect to the SQL Server instance and take advantage of those databases that exist there. That's gonna be the whole, uh, the whole gamut, the whole kind of a span of everything we're gonna cover. So first, let's head over once again to the File Explorer. We'll go to the SQL Server Installation Center again, and we're gonna to go to the download area for SSMS, SQL Server Management Studio. See you over there. So as always, we can see here is my desktop, and we're almost to completion here, but we're gonna find where we can download this SSMS setup, right? So to do this, as we've done in the past, we're gonna to go to that same SQL Server Installation Center, right, from that media from the beginning, and we'll start this up, get this taken care of, and here under Installation, we can see that we have Install SQL Server Management Tools. So that's what we're looking for here. So by clicking on this, it once again takes us to the location here. It's basically in the Microsoft documentation, but as you go through, we can see we have all the information, and right at the top, it always presents us with the most newly available version of SSMS. So the 18 version, which is actually what is meant to be used with SQL Server 2019. But honestly, SSMS versions, they work with, you can, with this installed, we can connect to 2019, 17, 16, it doesn't matter. It's simply just an interface and we connect to the database engines that way. So it's really neat, really important, really, there's a lot of functionality. So right at the top, just go ahead and download whatever version you have here that's most recent, because the install process, once again, very simple, very straightforward. So if you need to, pause this video, but I have mine already downloaded. So we can see it's right over here in my downloads. I have this SSMS setup. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on this item here. We're gonna see all I have to decide in is what location do I want this to be saved in? And then we simply just hit install. That is it. That is the only thing that is required for this process. This installer doesn't take as long as SSDT at all. But once this is said and done, we're gonna have a new application that's available to us um, in our operating system, so in our OS, and we can just go through the process, type in SSMS, and we can launch it. So once this is done installing, we'll go through that process and see how we can connect to our local instance of SQL Server, which we've installed already. We're only gonna see two databases in there, the reporting database and the report temp DB, but we'll have connected. So we'll let the magic of editing occur, and we'll skip forward to when my installer is finished. You might have to pause this. All right, so mine is all installed. Hopefully you guys are set and ready too. Once again, you may see a message on your installer that tells you either restart your computer and close. So to fully get it going, you may have to restart. We'll see in my example here that I don't have that need to do this. So we can just hit close here. But now when I go through the process, so let me bring this up as I've done in the past here. We can go ahead and run, open here. I'm gonna go look for SSMS, so SQL Server Manager, you can use those abbreviations, so I have it right here. I'm gonna go ahead and run this. 
and we can see it gets brought up. It's coming up on my other screen. It might pop up on my other screen. So let's see here if it plays nicely. Give it a second. Usually the first time you run these items, it does take a moment. It did open up on my other screen, so grant me one moment. You should see a screen like this. So for me, by default, it has put in the name of my machine in here, which if you're using the default instance is actually sufficient. So once again, video two, local, local host, I could put a period, all of these would work for me. And we are gonna use Windows authentication. We know that when we installed the database engine, we added ourselves, our current user into this. So this is good to go for our local install. So we can go ahead and hit connect. This is gonna be our database engine. And as mentioned, we're only gonna see two databases, our report server and report server temp DB. Those were done during the installation of our SSRS report server. Now, what about this? I'm gonna minimize my database engine and I'm gonna go ahead and hit the connect object again and I'm gonna change this and I'm gonna move this to analysis services. So if we look, it's automatically went to analysis services, gone video two slash MOLAP. That is our multi-dimensional uh, analysis services. So we can connect and you'll notice there's a new icon that'll present itself connecting to our multi-dimensional analysis service instance. So we'll let this come up. There it is. Now we haven't loaded anything in here, but what's interesting is now I'm going to hit connect again and I'm going to go ahead and usually the information is stored in here. So I can hit video two, right? With no additional and I can hit connect when I'm pointing to the analysis services and voila, now we're going to be connected to our tabular instance of analysis services. So right here in one interface, we're connected to all three of these different services right here. So our database engine, our analysis services engine, and then our tabular as well. So this is where you can go, look at objects, manipulate them as you see fit. But this is SSMS and there's so much power here. You can uh, open up new query windows and, and write T-SQL scripts, MDX. Uh, uh, you can write um, M. There's a lot of different choices and options and those capabilities are gonna grow with new versions of SSMS as well. But there we go. Now we have SQL Server Management Studio installed and ready. In the very next module, which is very important, we're gonna see how now we can add a couple of databases in here that we know we're gonna be using when we take these online classes. So we're gonna see how we can actually restore a database. So hopefully you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.